Hey guys, Jim here once again with another quick knife overview. A new little toy that I just got in from Greg Lightfoot. This is the uh, Handbuilt Custom Full Contact Fighter. And this thing is exemplary of what the word badass really, really means. This is an amazing, amazing knife. Um, quick specifications, it's just a touch over uh, 9 inches long. It's actually 9.12 inches in length. It's got a 4 inch blade. You're not going to feel that when you're holding it because he really maximizes uh, the use of the handle. The, the blade pretty much fills up the entire handle. So the handle feels small even though you're actually carrying a, a pretty full size knife here. Uh, it is a flipper. You've got uh, titanium liners, very thick titanium liners. And then you have a blue twill and carbon fiber for the scales front and back. He even incorporates a carbon fiber uh, tip-up carry clip on the other side, which was actually, it's a little detail, but it was one of my favorite things about it. Uh, weighs a little over 6 ounces. It's like 6.3, 6.35 ounces in weight. It's actually pretty light in the hand as compared to other knives like the, like the Bodega and, and things like that. Uh, it does use S35VN for the blade steel, and it does use IKBS bearings at the pivot. So it's going to be a really, really smooth opener. All right, before I start giving comparisons to other flippers and other knives of its ilk, let's give you guys a good size comparison here. Uh, as I typically do, I will bring out a large Sebenza, because that's pretty much the benchmark. Most people have a large Sebenza of some sort and up against a Strider SNG. And you're going to see there's uh, quite a size difference. This is actually a pretty sizable uh, knife. The thing is, though, once you get it in your hand, and that's because of uh, the way that the, uh, the butt end is, is actually manufactured, it does feel a lot smaller. So quick open shot here. Oh, I love how that thing opens. This thing is just rock solid. Okay, so there's a quick size comparison there between all three, just to give you a visual. Not really much uh, commentary needed on that. You see it is bigger uh, than the other ones sitting out here. And yes, somebody did comment on my channel. They wanted to see a review on that Strider. One of these days I'm going to get around to it. I promise uh, it is one of my favorite knives, so it has to be done at some point. So let's take a good look at this incredible knife. First thing that I fell in love with, besides the, the visual of the, uh, of the handles, was the way this blade was done. I love this asymmetrical top swedge that's been done there. I think that is one of the coolest features, how it just narrows down to almost nothing, and then it gets nice and thick and chunky again up at the tip. I'm hoping my camera is going to focus on that well. He did one hell of a job on this blade. Um, I've wanted a Greg Lightfoot for a long time. As many of you know, they're very difficult to come by. Any dealer that gets them in, they sell out almost immediately. Everybody's on an email notify list. Everybody wants to get one. And I was very fortunate uh, to have gotten the chance to get this one. I really feel fortunate to get this. So here is that blue twill and carbon fiber combination on the handles. What an amazing, amazing job he's done on this thing. And it does really help the, light, the, uh, the knife to be extraordinarily lightweight. And there's that really cool pocket clip. This is the first time I've owned a knife that actually uses carbon fiber for the pocket clip. Usually it's going to be you know, titanium or stainless steel or, or Timascus or something along those lines. But to use the carbon fiber, very, very cool. And it's, it's a nice piece of carbon fiber too. Uh, it's got pretty good retention. I wouldn't want to, you know, go crazy yanking on it or anything, but it's got good retention. Um, he is using standoffs to hold the frames together. I like that. As I mentioned before in, in previous uh, reviews or overviews, I should say, um, I prefer that because I like to be able to blow out any pocket lint or anything that gets inside of the knives. Instead of having to deal with a backspacer and trying to get stuff out from behind that backspacer and clean it out or even have to open the knife up all the way to do it. I prefer not to disassemble my knives if I don't really need to. There is Greg Lightfoot's logo. And as you see, the grind on this beautiful double-sided hollow grind. Excellent job. Nice satin finishing. 
not overdone. Definitely not a pimpy knife, but it's got a lot of style. And again, that still, that still blows me away the way that's shaped. And you'll see it even better when the knife is folded up. And you see he's using just monster blocks of titanium for the liners. And a nice titanium lock bar there. Fairly early lock up on that. And there is that blade sitting in the handles. It's just, it looks so wicked cool because you're looking at this straight spine and then when the light hits it just right, it just looks like the blade is curved over and then comes out to this almost uh, chisel point here at the end. Very cool design all the way around. Uh, it flips absolutely effortlessly. Uh, I would put it maybe just one nick below a bodega. There's just still something about a bodega. When you flip a bodega open, it's just, it's so different uh, from everybody else's work. He does such a, an incredible job on that. But I really, really like how it feels. There are a couple little things that I would change about this if I could. Uh, one, it's, it's a little bit of a sharp edge here on the flipper. I would like to have seen that rounded off a little bit. Uh, it can be a little rough because, you know, you're going to sit there and play with your knife a lot. You're going to be flipping it. You're going to be practicing with it. And you're going to be getting used to the knife. At least I always do. And after a while, uh, you end up getting a little bit of irritation. And it's not as bad as strider thumb, you know, sitting there flicking open your striders all the time and on that, uh, that oblong shape cutout. But it, it is going to get a little bit irritating. The other thing I would change is this right here. This is actually quite sharp. So when you've got this in your hand, I love how it locks your fingers in where you want to hold it. And it's even better for a reverse handhold. It actually locks your hand in for a really great hold. He's contoured the back side of the frame perfectly to ramp for your thumb. That's very comfortable. And when you're holding it like this, the sharpness here doesn't affect you at all. But during a normal handhold, uh, you do feel it on the fatty part of the back of your uh, of your hand or your fingers. And you could say it, that's fine. Maybe my fingers are just fatter than yours. I don't care. But what I'm saying is it is a little bit sharp. Uh, and it's the exact same edge on the carbon fiber and on the titanium. So, you know, it would, it would probably take away a little bit from the aggressive look if it were rounded. But I would think that he could contour it just a tiny bit. It wouldn't sacrifice the design all that much. And it would be a little bit more comfortable in the hand. Another thing that I do like is the way that the pocket clip is shaped and being made of this very thin carbon fiber. Uh, when you're holding it, you get absolutely no hot spot in here. The only hot spot you're going to feel right there and right here against the back side of that flipper. So it actually, um, that flipper actually does nail you there and when it's closed and you're flipping it open. So, yeah. And that may be something I have taken care of myself. I might just send this to somebody. I'm very fortunate to know a, a few really awesome knife makers. And maybe we could radius that and radius that just a little bit. Shouldn't cost that much. Shouldn't be a hell of a lot of work. And I don't think it's going to detract away from the design at all. But that's really the only parts that I don't like about it. I love the weight. I love the way that it carries. Um, I like his pivot style on there. Very, very cool. A little bit different than uh, what everybody else is using. And you know, I've really gotten into that. I've really, I really like seeing uh, custom-made pivots. There's a, really not really a custom pivot, but a custom pivot plate on uh, the Todd bag. Uh, Mikkel did a nice custom pivot on his upcoming Maddox. This is the prototype for his upcoming series. Uh, obviously, uh, Yoon does a, an amazing job on his pivots. The Yuna knives are so incredible. They do a nice job on something custom there. You know, then you get into something, you know, it's a little more basic like Strider and you actually have to use a spanner tool to open theirs up. But, you know, it looks very utilitarian. It looks, I don't want to say ugly, uh, because this is much more of a, you know, tactical style knife. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's kind of utilitarian and, and uh, kind of generic looking, in my opinion. And then when you get something like this, it's not overly fancy. It's not overly done. It's just a nice, clean design, and it enhances the overall look. And, and I think the perceived value of the knife. I love the profile of this blade. I love the way that he's grounded. I love it. It's, it's, it's sharp. It's not insanely sharp. Um, I've gotten some knives recently that have been absolute hair splitters. Uh, Mayuna being one of them. It's an incredible, incredibly sharp blade. Um, this is sharp, certainly sharp enough for almost anything that you would throw at it. 
Um, not as sharp as some others that I've had. So not bad, just not uh, overly impressive on that. But the way that it feels in the hand, again, aside from that and that, getting your hand around it. If your hand was a little bit smaller, you probably wouldn't even you know feel that or notice that. But I love how this feels. Um, I would have preferred some jimping on the back side of the frame. There's a little bit on the back side of the blade on the ramp. It's not bad. Uh, it's not really hard jimping, so your finger doesn't dig into it. it. It can actually, as you see, and you can watch my finger turning red and yellow, I'm applying pressure, and it's, it can still slide off of there fairly easily. Uh, when you get into something like uh, the Yuna, it doesn't. It just it locks in. So I'm kind of used to a little bit better jimping. Again, I, I'm not out there uh, slaying zombies or, or, or doing anything of any great importance with this. I'm carrying it. I'm showing it off. I'm cutting things here and there. As a matter of fact, two minutes out of the box and this thing was already cutting stuff. I had some boxes I had to tear down. And I figured, what the hell, let's give this thing a little bit of a workout. And it performed wonderfully. Uh, it did a great job. So for any normal everyday tasks, it's going to be great. Again, the feel in the hand, the balance, the lightweightness because of the materials used throughout the entire handle, it feels wonderful. When I put it next to my Todd bag, uh, the Todd bag is certainly going to feel uh, heavier in the hand. This is a more substantial knife. Even though they don't look that different as far as their thickness, their profile, uh, or anything else, and they do have the same size blade, um, the bodega comes out feeling a little bit heavier. But I just want to give you guys more or less a 360 degree view. You know, not so much a history lesson, not so much a technical review of the knife. Just what I liked about it, what uh, what I would change. I'm not saying that I dislike anything about it. Um, but, it, you know, if I had my druthers, I would I would change a couple little minor things. Um, I will be owning more Greg Lightfoots. He's an amazing knife maker. He's out of Canada. Any major show you go to, and I don't mean just going to the Blade show, um, but just going to any major show, you're probably going to come across uh, Greg at one of the shows. And he's always got a table full of knives. This is definitely the level of quality that people aspire to. And the funny thing is, I mean, this one cost about, uh, this one cost me $650 at GP Knives. I love GP Knives, great guys over there. And I feel it's worth every penny and then some. I've handled knives that were a little more money, you know, that eight to $900 range. And I think this absolutely fits within that for the, the level of quality in the materials. Uh, again, he does an incredible job here with the carbon fiber and blue twill. He's not using cheap looking hardware to, uh, to assemble the knife. He is using standoffs instead of a backspacer. And again, that's more of a preference thing than a quality thing. So I don't want you to misunderstand me there. He's using, you know, exotic materials for the clip instead of using titanium or, or stainless steel or what have you. Uh, he is fashioning carbon fiber into it. I think that's a cool idea. A lot of titanium in this knife. There is a tremendous amount of titanium. Um, the, the blade stop that he's using is very, very effective. His, the detent, oh my goodness, the detent on this thing is incredible. And that's part of why it flips so well. You're, you're pushing against a strong detent. And then once you get past that break point, the IKBS takes over and just whips it out. He does a great job on assembly. The fit and finish is fantastic. Um, he is a manufacturer that produces probably a little more than some other of the mid-range to high-end uh, knife makers do. You'll see his stuff aplenty. They're always sold out, but you're, you see that when de uh, dealers receive them, they're receiving a fair amount of knives. It's not like uh, some manufacturers where they're going to get one, two, maybe three knives. It's like I've been chasing a, a, a Dwayne Carrillo for forever. Dwayne Carrillo, I guess, is, is the better way to pronounce it. You know, whether it be a tunnel rat or whatever, I've been trying to get one forever. And every time somebody gets one, they get one or two knives. They're sold out as soon as they upload it. And I'm probably never going to get my hands on one. With a light foot, you're going to find them a little more plentiful. Right now, he's doing some of his models where he's doing like titanium bolsters and using different materials for the handles. The ones that seem to stick around right now are the, I don't know if he's using canvas or linen micarta, but he's doing like an olive drab green micarta on some of them. And they're not really selling that well from what I see. I know I certainly don't like that color. So if you don't care about that, you'll be able to get it. He's definitely going to be uh, on that mid-range price range. 
I think I've seen a couple of his models go up over 900, but not very many. So I think you're getting a lot of bang for your buck. I think if this were a thousand dollars, you know, more along the lines of, of what Todd Begg is charging, I think you might want to put a little more thought into it. Or I don't want to say that you want to because of this knife. I think that you're forced to at that price range. There are certain cutoffs for certain collectors, and I think at a certain price range, you you end up putting a little more thought into that purchase. At 650, it's still obviously a thought worthy purchase but I think it's much easier to justify it at 650. And I think it's why he's seeing the success that he is. Uh, you've got an incredible quality knife. I think if this had a price tag of 850, $900 on it, after handling it, after having it in my pocket for a few days, I would say I would absolutely spend that on this knife. You know, the ones that I don't get stuff like uh, Hinderer's. I love Rick Hinderer's knives. They're obviously an incredible quality knife. But the thing that, that most people don't realize is we're, what you're spending, let's say on an XM18, three and a half inch, you're spending $800 to $1,000, depending on who, what, where, when, has them available and has them for sale. But if your law enforcement or your fire or military, active duty in any of those, he'll make that same knife for you, sell it to you direct for $375. So while it's amazing and I think it's great that he's paying back all the people that are putting their lives on the line. It also puts into perspective how much money he has in his materials and how much he puts uh, value on his own time. I don't think that that $375 knife is ever going to be worth eight to $900 to me. This absolutely would be. There's a lot more work that goes into this, at least to my eyes, and I can more easily justify it. Now, if that same hinderer was uh, between 400 and, I don't know, 550, I think it would be worth it for the exclusivity of having it, the quality that they are, um, and the, the the fact that they're modular. You can change out your scales. You can change out your hardware and do some cool stuff. But at the current prices, I just refuse to pay it. I've had a, a few lines on, on a few of them, and I've just passed on them. Uh, if and when I get the chance to own one at the, at the right price, I'm absolutely going to add a hinderer to my collection. But when I'm getting stuff like this, whether it be uh, you know, a Greg Lightfoot or a Kirby Lambert or a Todd Bag or a Mikkel Willemson, uh, I think I'm going to be just fine and just happy enough with my collection as it stands that I don't have to worry about it too much. So anyway, there's your quick look at it. A uh, little longer than I expected it to be. I tend to ramble a little bit, but you guys already know that. So there's the look, and if you have any questions for me, feel free to shoot me some comments. Thanks again for watching.